Hi there, I'm Phil Dell. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be talking about my approach to producing my track Glide Dog. Racing through my deep sleep, heavy as I go. This track is called Glide Dog and I'm going to be talking a little bit about my approach to producing this song. So to begin with, I basically wrote the chords for the string part on piano and then decided I'd really like strings to cover it, to give it a kind of sinister feel. And maybe we can have a quick look just at the string samples here. So I'm using VSL strings. Um, that's Virtual Symphonic Library. Uh, I've always used this, it's brilliant. I do composing for like film and advertising using this as well and it's, it's brilliant. Um, you can get into loads of detail, so if you're not too confident on articulating string parts, you can just use the basic articulations which will give you nice kind of string sounds just by playing a few chords. Um, and if you want to get more heavily into it, you can get the, the solo strings, which gives you a wider range of articulations from, um, yeah, just kind of dynamic crescendos to make the strings feel a lot more kind of alive. So for Glide Dog, I went with the basic articulation because I didn't want too much activity going on. Um, I just wanted it to be very kind of calm, um, sustained chords without too much build or too much drama. So, uh, and also I went for chamber strings as opposed to a solo instrument. So that's what gives us the feeling that there's a string section rather than just a solo string. Um. And for me, a really big thing is also the panning. So it makes such a lot of difference to how a mix will come across and an arrangement. So with the strings, I like to pan them quite wide, left and right, to give a kind of um, a feeling of being enveloped in the sound, whilst allowing space for lots of other more central instruments, as you'd imagine, the drums, the bass, vocals to be more central. And then I added these toms in, which just uses ultra beat. Um, it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant tool. Uh, this is classic dub kit. So I quite like choosing different elements from different genres, um, just going by how the sound itself best serves the spirit of the song. vocal parts that I've put in here, um, I've literally just chosen a tiny fragment from the main vocal, there we go, and what I've applied to it is some delay, you can have a look at that delay there, and also um, there actually is a, oh sorry no I'm thinking of a different part, so yeah there's just mainly delay on that one, some EQ the EQ, not doing much, I've just used the preset, female vocal, um, and then the Ox, so I've used um, this compressor, Oxford Dynamics, this is in the Oxford Sonox range, which I really enjoy using, um, that's my main go-to for any sort of compression and reverb and limiting, so yeah, let's have a look. <laughs> And then there's actually on the other vocal fragment that's doing that same little oh sound, I've applied the pitch 
um, the pitch corrector, which is a really simple tool, but it gives quite a nice effect if you just allow one note to sound, so you can kind of mute all the other notes, um, have it coming in as a really fast response. So this note will only sound G sharp, and it gives it, I'll just solo that so you can hear it. Well, yeah, that's just an example of if you can't find the right note for a tiny fragment, you can just apply something like that really simply. For the piano part, I'd normally be using the VSL Imperial um, piano, but I see I haven't actually loaded it at this point. But when I first play it in, just because it takes so much kind of processing power, um, I just play it in on like the basic, the Logic EVP88 electric piano um, using my upright digital piano, which is also in my studio. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that or not. <laughs> um, and then after the MIDI is all programmed in, then I would just load up the Imperial Vienna piano, print that part, and that way I save a lot of kind of processing power, especially if I'm working at 96, which I often do, although less so nowadays because engineers don't and then there's no point because everything's incompatible. But yeah. <laughs> A thing now. I need more blood than you could pour love. More blood than you could pour love. Okay, and so some of these synth parts, I've just used the yeah the EFM one for this, and literally just gone through all the different sounds and chosen one that I think suits the spirit of the song or if there's like a space in the arrangement for this kind of frequency level, I'd put something in that would suit it. Um. And there we just heard a flute part come in and that's also a VSL flute. Name. There's a bit of reverb applied to that. That's um, another Oxford reverb. We can have a look at what we've done there. I've used an Andy Hall preset. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think as I go, when I'm working on the arrangements, I tend to roughly mix as I work. So I'm applying quite a few things um, from the EQ to the compression. And when I'm sort of pretty proud of how things are starting to shape up, then I'll even apply like a mastering setting to kind of get the full effect um, of how the song will come across. I think one of my main <clears throat> inspirations for this song was quite a kind of visual inspiration. I kind of imagined this quite sinister sort of world. Um, almost partly kind of gothic, I suppose, and dark. So it was important to me to choose the instruments that would kind of best paint that picture and leave listeners with a kind of idea in their minds of the visual landscape that I was trying to create with the music. Um, one of the nice touches in this is probably the VSL marimba. Keep Let's just take some reverb off so you can hear the sound a bit more crisply. Such a great sample um, of a, mar a marimba. And you could pour my love. going on under the hard mallet setting on single hits. Uh, you've also got glissandi and lots of different articulations there. V 
BSL is great for any kind of orchestral scoring. Okay, so I've taken the reverb off, well, kind of down. There we go, off the marimba. And we can just have a look at the type of reverb I've applied. It's another Oxford reverb. I've gone with Andy Hall preset, which is um, one that I particularly like, but there's lots you can choose from. Here we've got all the different halls, we've got all the different emulations. Yeah, so, so that's the reverb and I've got my reverbs going in on bus one here. I like to use um, sends for my reverb because it gives me a bit more control. So let's, that's a nice sound, it's, there we go, yeah. session I normally colour them in like different colours so that I can see at a glance um, the sections that are causing problems with the rough mixing or just get an idea for like how evenly balanced the song is in terms of the arrangement so um, the vocals I've done here in sort of bluish colours and everything else is green but normally I would do string parts in brown because you know cellos and violas are brown <laughs> and, um, and I'd do like the bass lines in red and it just helps visually to kind of quickly mix and quickly find what you're working with. But then you can pour love. One thing I also really like to do is have a reasonably even spread of frequencies going on. So I like to have a, you know, a nice balanced amount of high end frequency instruments um, as well as like the bass. Yeah, just giving a nice all around balance and panning everything out so nothing is in anything's way too much. So with recording the vocals, um, the vocals for this track were recorded um, I think only in about two sessions using this U87 Neumann microphone which um, I'm a really big fan of using. Um, yeah and I kind of felt that when I was recording the vocals just one solo vocal wasn't quite enough to form the sort of eerie um, atmosphere of what the vocal should have been delivering. We can listen to it just with one vocal and you'll see what I mean. It's kind of, hang on a sec, it's a lot kind of um, weaker in, in message. <laughs> Whereas all together it suddenly then sounds like a kind of team of witches and it gets really nice and eerie, which suits the sort of message of the song. Skin don't mean a thing, your skin don't mean a thing, no. Also, because the style of delivery is almost kind of almost spoken, it's very much in the head voice. Um, this double tracking gives a lot more body to the vocal, which helps it cut through the mix. We can look at some of the um, inputs here. So for the vocal, we've got a bit of delay, uh, just some stereo delay going on. Hardly anything actually, just like 4% to the left, 5% to the right. Um, 
And then for the EQ, I've just gone with a, a preset female vocal. And then I might just like start from the preset and then adjust from there to get things more into the range that I want. And then again for um, the dynamics, I've gone with Oxford Dynamics for the compression. And there's actually um, a vocal preset here, which I only like slightly adapt. Um, the makeup tends to be plus 10 and I bring it down a bit because that's a bit too much. And there's a little bit of reverb as well, um, just the kind of touch of the reverb that I've got coming in from bus one, which is the Andy Hall one, which we looked at earlier. That's coming in onto all of these vocals, just a touch. So coming to the kind of the real meat of the rhythm section in this track, it's again, it's ultra beat and it's the classic dub kit we've just got a kind of yeah this is interesting because normally the best thing to do would be to put these on two different tracks so you'd have maximum control over you know eqing such different parts um i haven't done that i've got them both on the same track and it seems to all be okay so <laughs> Uh, the mix sounded pretty good when I last heard it, so um, I guess the way it's been mixed here in Ultra Beat as a sample is fine. Um, I haven't had to really adapt anything too much. feeling like the flute is a little bit loud right now so I'm going to take that down and pan it a bit further to the right so that it's just out of the way. Yeah let's have a look at these little sounds. These little, I've called them the vocal shudder. And I think this was probably created, yeah, just by looping for just a, a few loops, um, a tiny fragment of the vocal. And that vocal was also put through this little pitch correction. So it only sounds on an E. And it's also been pitch shifted down minus 12 semitones. So that's what gives us this. <coughs> little effect which is nice okay now we could have a quick look at the the symbols which basically give us our crescendo moment for um the choruses they could actually be a bit louder in the mix. Um, and I've got them really central in terms of the panning, um, but normally I would have them out a little bit. I think they're quite central because the arrangement is quite sparse and they can afford to take up the space there in the spotlight. Okay. Maybe not that much space though. <laughs> Let's take those out. To give this real world. And then let's have a quick look. Um, so it's Vienna again, and we've got symbol, standard A. Yeah. And you can choose between a stick or a mallet, and the stick would obviously be a much harsher sound. There'd be like a lot of attack. Whereas the mallet is soft. Um, you know, type of drumstick, so it would yeah, give you a, a kind of softer hit. To give this real worth, real hurt, to give this real worth. And for 
for the um, EQ for the cymbal, I've used a tom EQ in medium. Often um, you'll use something like the actual cymbal EQ and it will be too bright or too harsh. So sometimes you have to play around and just find, I don't know, different ways in to getting the sound that you want that might not be the most logical. To give this real world. I'm gonna need more blood than you could pour love. More blood than you could pour love. Um, further down the road, um, with some tracks, I might add like a sort of de to the vocals because my S's are particularly kind of sibilant and harsh. Uh, but I haven't needed to do that with this one. Um, I'm trying to think of. Need real hurt to give this real worth. Real hurt to give this real worth. This is also quite a small arrangement. A lot of my other tracks would have. Um, my other songs would have like 50 to 60 tracks with like a lot more kind of going on. Um, and when that's the case and you're recording at quite a high sample rate, I'd normally need to create a lot more sends um, to save on kind of processing power. But yeah, for this one, I've just needed to put reverb on the send and it's, it's fine. Um, so I've, I've put a little bit of mastering on just to give us the sort of idea of how it will sound in the end. Um, yeah, and I've just used a really simple Logic um, Channel EQ Ballad Final Mix EQ. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a master EQ that's available here under mastering. As I say, I'm not a mastering engineer. So <laughs> I just go with all of these um, presets and it's the safest way forward to get a half decent sound. Uh, the Sonox Oxford plugin also has a master setting here. Um, the dynamic plugin, sorry, has a master setting so you can just tweak some of these. Again, I, I tend to only really tweak the makeup because it comes in a bit too harshly. So with this mastering, I would take that off completely before I sent any of these tracks through to a mastering engineer or to a mixing engineer. Um, this track has been mixed not by me, by Ross Cullum, who mixed a lot of the album. Um, and what I would do would be I would kind of take off my main EQ, like compression, um, any delay that isn't like imperative to the identity of the song. So if the delay is doing something really weird, then I would most probably send him a stem with the delay on and a stem that's completely dry and he could emulate what I'd done um, if he wanted to or just use, use the stem that I provided. But generally everything, all of these effects will be taken off. Um, yeah, whether the panning is taken off or not depends on your relationship with your mixer and whether or not you would like to see what they would do with the panning or whether you want to stick to the way you've panned everything out. Um, but it's a really good question, like how, how much you supply mixers with, like how much of the delay, how much of specific effects um, and how much creative license you're willing to give a mixer. These are all really big questions in the process. So yeah, pretty much everything goes dry and then there'll be a reference MP3 with this that I've created. Uh, so they can kind of choose to pick and choose whatever they want. And we can talk about it as we go through the mixing process together. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow me online, you can at facebook.com forward slash official or instagram.com forward slash official. Thanks for watching. Take care.